great pleasure to welcome everyone here today. Minister Coveney, uh, Chairman of the RDS, Matt Dempsey. Uh, and a particular welcome to those of you for whom this is your first visit to the Institute, the Inst Institute for International and European Affairs. So I just maybe start by just telling you something about the Institute and what, what we do. Um, essentially, our focus is the, the main European and international issues of strategic importance to Ireland. That's our purpose in life, to talk about those, to debate them, to promote uh, good quality discussion or do good quality discourse about them, ultimately with a view to uh, having a more informed political and public debate and ultimately uh, better policy. So the issues we're touching on today really meet these criteria, the issues of the food security and climate change because these issues are of crucial importance at Irish, European and international level. On the food security issue, the, the figures are very clear and well known, that we're heading for a world population of over 9 billion by 2050, and the needs, food needs are, are, have to be produced on a shrinking resource base. Climate change is one of the great issues of our time. And the world is going to have to take decisions about how to reduce emissions, uh, like greenhouse gas emissions. And one of the rendezvous for that is the big meeting in Paris at the end of this year. And we all know that Ireland has a specific issue here. We have very challenging um, emissions targets at European and international level. And we also have ambitions to expand our food production. So the question is how the, this circle can be squared. At the international level, this dilemma between climate change and food security has given rise to the development in, in recent years of thinking about what's called climate smart agriculture. And climate smart agriculture has three core dimensions. It's about sustainably increasing agricultural productivity and incomes. It's about adapting and building resilience to climate change, and it's about reducing greenhouse gas emissions where possible. And the Institute once decided to focus on this issue uh, for its 2014-2015 programme, very much building on work it's been doing over the last number of years on climate change and sustainability, and work that has been recognised in that the Institute has been ranked uh, last year as the 20, 24th most influential think tank on climate change policy and economics. Now, by a, a great coincidence, the RDS was also thinking about working in this whole, in this field as well. And so, in talking to each other, in talking to each other we, we thought the best way to proceed was to form a partnership uh, on, on this topic and to produce a, a leadership forum on it. And as we embark on this leadership forum, I just want to talk briefly about the basic approach we want to use in conducting this forum. Firstly, it has to be based on good science. We need to have a rigorous discussion about the scientific basis under, underpinning climate smart agriculture, taking account of the, the science of, cl of climate change. And to do this, we want to draw on the best national and international experts. It has to be based on open and inclusive discussion. There's a wide range of opinions about this topic in this country, ranging from organs of the state, farm organizations, NGOs, and the business sector. And we need to have an honest and robust discussion about these topics. And the third element of this way to do things is that this needs to be conducted with basic good manners because we, it, there, are, there are times in this debate I think uh, those standards have not been maintained and that is something we want to, to do in, in promoting open discussion. And out of all this I think our ambition should be no less than to create a new national narrative on climate smart agriculture for the purpose of influencing direct, the direction of national policy and for the purpose of contributing, where possible, to put Ireland in a leadership position in debates on climate smart agriculture policy at European and international level. 
And an example of what can be achieved, I would point to, is Ireland's role over the past decade in influencing international nutrition policy. And there, that was done by three, having three components. The first was good science, the second was a supportive policy framework, and the third was political support. The good science came through technical breakthroughs that I'm glad my former organization, Concern, was crucially involved in, in developing different approaches to solving acute and chronic malnutrition. The policy dimension was created by the framework of the 2008 Hunger Task Force report, and that was accepted by the government and accepted by all the major NGOs. So we had a genuinely national policy on this. And the third element was the political support, because nutrition and food security became a central priority for both Irish aid policy and Irish foreign policy. So those three elements, good science, a policy framework and political support, all of those combined to enable Ireland to play a leadership role at international level on international nutrition. And I believe something similar can happen in regard to climate smart agriculture policy. And that's our challenge and I see today as the first step in trying to see how we can realise that uh, opportunity. Uh, the partnership with RDS, I think, is a, is, a, is a great asset to the Institute to, to enable us to move in that direction. And when I say that we need to create, uh, have a debate and promote discourse based on good science and good manners, I can think of no better personification of this than Matt Dempsey, the, chair, the chairman of the RDS. <laughs> <laughs> and I would now like to invite Matt <laughs> to, to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. Um, Minister, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, after 300 years, I suppose, or very near it, uh, I'm not sure whether the RDS has got by on, on a mixture of good manners or trying to stick with its vocation uh, of trying to foster the economic and cultural development of the country, because uh, that's primarily what we're about. And on the agricultural side, I, th I think we've made some real progress in recent years, uh, both on the cattle breeding side, and I think we've been in at the very beginning on the whole development of forestry, and with the Forest Service uh, having a series of awards that recognises excellence and sustainability. And, and it's that commitment, I think, and hopefully capacity uh, that we will bring to this on the question of climate change itself and food security and the potential of Irish agriculture, uh, these are serious issues, to put it at its mildest, and were recognised in the October summit of EU leaders, uh, where for the first time uh, the communique was very clear after the summit to ensure coherence between EU's food security and climate change objectives. And that very significant clause, in my view, uh, didn't get into the summit without a real Irish input from presumably the Department of Agriculture uh, and other cabinet ministers and finally nailed home by the Taoiseach. Uh, Ireland, of course, in particular, we see our most competitive sector being released from quota uh, just in a few weeks' time. We have ambitious food harvest targets. We have a higher proportion of greenhouse gases of agricultural origin compared with the rest of Europe. And at the moment, binding EU targets. Where the end outcome will lie is not clear, but we have to inform the debate from an Irish perspective. From an RDS perspective, we're delighted to team up with the Institute of International and European Affairs. It's by far our leading national think tank. Uh, it's enormously respected. Uh, it's almost 25 years in existence when the gap for serious consideration of future EU policy was identified as a national need and it's established an enormous credibility uh, for which we should pay tribute. But from an agricultural point of view, Minister, I think you'd agree we have been here before. The nitrates regulations were passed and in law almost a decade uh, before Ireland was forced to act. It ended up costing farmers well over a billion in farmyard investment, the state a great deal of money in emergency grant aid, and oppressive regulations, some of which are only now being unwound. 
And I think it's right that we're not going to be caught in the same bind again. Another example of this, of course, cap reform itself. The first proposals were extremely serious for commercial Irish agriculture. Minister, your engagement early on with your most senior civil servants, uh, and I'm delighted to see Aidan O'Driscoll here as Permanent Secretary or Secretary General of the Department, early on and right through the process shows how a sensible solution to the most contentious issues can be achieved, provided there is willingness and information and scientific basis to the debate and to the meetings. The recent Commission report of just 10 days ago shows that the climate change policy framework with binding targets is still in place. The issue, despite some of the silences, has not gone away. And this is all the more reason for a structured approach involving the best possible science taking into and account of the national priorities. The steering group, comprised of the Institute of European and International Affairs and RDS personnel, will be consulting and surveying stakeholders, convening events and workshops, hosting national and international speakers and experts, and publishing a final report, hopefully by this time next year. By being to the forefront of this change, Ireland should be better placed to take advantage of new opportunities and at the same time face up to the legislative and actual realities. The Chatham House format should ensure that people can talk with an easy conscience and an open mind and be received in the same format. I'd like to thank enormously Tom Arnold and the Institute for teaming up with the RDS. It's an adventure that is in the national interest very clearly and one that I know will bear real fruit. And Minister Coveney and your department, thank you very much for your support and for the commitment with which you're bringing it and for the premeditation, the premeditation that has gone in to having such a structured approach to what is solving a really significant Irish dilemma as we face into the next few years. Minister, if I can hand over to you and thank you again. Thank you.